You can, I mean, but the drive back might be a little interesting. And I, and I like to see the Rio guys are as enthusiastic as hungover as they are drunk, which is very exciting. I'm getting the same enthusiasm and woohoos at this time in the morning because I'm dying, but they're still hard to go, which is great to see. So we got a good day today. Yesterday was all about how big your data was. Uh, today is about how well you use it. So we got a little different scenario today. So for all you people out there with little data, today's a good day for you. Pay attention. Take a lot of notes. Because if you use it well, you're in good place. So coming up first, we have Eli Goodman from ComScore, and he's going to really talk to us a lot about uh, some really premier research that they have not shown before. They just published. So we're really looking forward to see what he has to show about that. Um, Eli, do you want to sort of start making your way up? Because I don't really have much for opening remarks uh, today. I'm not going to stand on that stage today, so I don't almost pass out on you like I did yesterday morning. And we'll leave it at that. Look, see, look, the hands. Yeah, yeah right? Fire up there. Yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get a nosebleed, so I'm going to stand down here. <clears throat> thank you, Rob. And uh, thank you, everybody, for... <laughs> Come on, that was great applause, guys. That was feel good. Um, better be better at the back end. So, I, you know, I want to say it's great to be back at the Search Insider Summit. It's been a couple of years since I've been here, and it's great to see a lot of faces that I'm familiar with, and I'm excited to meet the new ones as I catch my breath up here in, at 8,200 feet. So if you guys, you know, if I pass out, somebody just, just make a call for me real quick on the way. So as far as what we're going to talk about this morning, it's about the future of, di di excuse me, the future of digital media measurement. So we've come out with a white paper, and you can download it at comscore.com slash blog. It's really about things to think about, some technical as well as technique-based stuff that we recommend and stuff that we're pushing for our clients and for the industry as a whole. So if, if anybody's not familiar with Comscore, just so you guys know, we're like the leading research company measurement as it relates to all things internet worldwide. We've got a panel of 2 million people, 172 different countries, and you can see we measure a lot of stuff. So run around the circle, it's pretty straightforward. Now, this is really where we get into what do we find to be one of the most interesting problems that exist today. It's about cross-media or multi-platform measurement, as we call it. If you guys look at it, it looks like you know, back about June 2011, only about 5 6% of all web traffic was taking place uh, on non-PC-based devices. If you look at what's happened over the course of that time, that is now upwards of 15%. Anybody here use uh, non-PC devices to access the internet? Right, probably a couple, right? And you know, this is not just us as major technology adopters, it's also your moms and your dads and your grandparents and your kids. And this is gonna cross over between smartphones, tablets, PCs, televisions, smart TVs, gaming consoles. And this is really where it creates a pretty serious problem as it comes to your marketers, your technology advertisers, whatever it's going to be. How do you go about coming up with a quantified way to be able to define audiences and a qualitative way to be able to understand your campaigns and what it is that you guys are doing and the effectiveness of them. Now, it's a problem, it's also an opportunity. Guess what, I'm the one that made that up. I'm sure you guys have never heard that before, that a problem is also an opportunity, but it's certainly something that, uh, you know, a very simple and easy way to be able to think about what we have going on as it relates to uh, digital media measurement. So I'd like to break down for you our 10 principles for the future of digital media measurement and analytics. So this is really, some of this stuff has already been going on, and these are things that we are pushing forward as, uh, again, sort of like one of the defining measurement organizations, the things that we recommend to our clients. Now, in the beginning, it's a lot of big picture stuff, uh, a little technical, right? So I'm gonna geek out a little bit about some technical methodology things. But as we get into the middle of this, I promise there will be some real meat uh, for us to be able to dig into. So first principle. All media, including TV, is going digital. Measurement must follow the same page. So th this is an issue if you guys just think of, anybody here ever worked in uh, just TV measurement? Yes, no, you've heard of it? You guys, till this day, it still happens where people fill out little panels, like you know, they fill out little diaries and send them off in order to be able to say, this is what I'm watching. Now this is, if you're just relying just on panels, whether it be for television, but all of these different media, and this is something that also Comscore suffered from for many, many years, uh, you know, had been panel only, is that that's an issue and that's a problem. The solution here, and this is really, uh, you know, some of you are probably involved in this, some other not, it's about census data. So gathering up data directly from the servers, from the actual 
devices themselves, not just from the people and using a sample, but gathering up all of that web analytics data. So it's a kind of not just like sampling, but the entire mix. This is going to be incredibly important moving forward as it relates to, again, especially when you're talking about sort of merging TV together. And later on, we'll talk about some techniques related to that. But the second is that it can't just swing to measurement, because guess what? People buy things, screens don't buy things. A cookie doesn't buy something. In the world of search, it's not how many searches, it's how many people are running those searches. I could potentially run 10 iPhone searches in a month, but I'm only one buyer, right? So it's very important to be able to consider, you have to be able to define populations and not just look at quantitative metrics, such as, again, cookies or impressions. So census data, so if we look at the other side of that coin, census data by itself is not going to work, and that is, again, why we push very heavily. We actually have a, a combo panel and census-level measurement, what we call unified digital measurement. But when you guys are looking at your campaigns and the providers you work with, you really need to be able to learn and understand what type of methodology and where they're gathering up their data. You really need to have that combo of those two things in order to be able to help define populations, but have, and this is where we start to get into scale, the depth of information that you require in order to be able to come up with actionable insights. Multi-platform measurement must integrate census data for big data, right? So we talked little data before. You guys talked about big data yesterday. But the fact of the matter is, this is not 50 years ago where you're looking at television, you have to optimize for ABC, CBS, or NBC, right? The, the fragmentation as it relates to media, I'm sure even just the number of organizations that are in this room that you guys deal with or that you represent, let alone the seemingly endless number of options that people could be visiting at any given time for news or entertainment or consumption. So this really gets back into broad media behaviors are great. People watch things, people consume stuff, but it's that big data and the depth of that and being able to get into it. That granularity is going to be required in order for you guys to be able to come up with and understand cross-platform measurement. Okay, so this is a lot of methodology stuff. I'm sorry, I just wanted to give you guys a couple little bit of background there. But we're really going to dig into what I feel are the most important components of this particular presentation and this manifesto that we're talking about. So holistic reporting should provide a unified platform agnostic view. So I'm sure you guys, you guys deal with this a lot, right? People say, well, I need to optimize for the smartphone or for the iPhone or the Android or what I'm doing on a tablet is different or if I'm focusing on television. Do you guys, yes, you guys agree you have a lot of these conversations? Yes, I see a lot of nodding heads, maybe some, some not. But the fact of the matter is, is the consumer, which you all are consumers on top of being marketing professionals, are that you don't really worry about the particular device. It's not so much about the device, it's the content that you're consuming. So it's about your experience of, I'm consuming Facebook, I'm watching Netflix on my smartphone, or I start watching a game on my TV and I'm now carrying my tablet with me, and I continue that further. So this is actually one of the most important components of this, as we look at measurement, we talk to our clients and begin to look at stuff moving forward. By all means, there's going to be individual, let's say, you know, you're going to optimize for different types of devices and different types of experiences, because the way that people use them can be very different, right? The way to you use your smartphone is different from the way that you use your tablet. That said, is that's going to be subsets of what is going to be a broader set of data that you guys are going to be dealing with and we are pushing for very, very, very heavily in order to be able to govern all of those devices so that you're able to see a deduplicated view and understand people and their behaviors across all of the devices. So that way, every time a cookie shows up from a smartphone and a tablet, and again, from a PC and a smart TV, that's not four people doing four different things. It's one person having one set of seamless experiences. So when we look at the measurement and analytics that's going to come from that, that is absolutely our philosophy and the way that we're pushing and the way that we see the marketplace going. So I just want you guys to keep this in mind when you look at Again, the future, now we're talking about a lot of individual stuff, but you're going to start pushing forward into there's a big number and then little subsets of that underneath. Viewable impressions. So viewable impressions are currently the standard on TV because by definition, if an ad is being served on television, it, is, it has what's called an opportunity to see an OTS. So whether you're sitting in front of the TV or you get up and you go to the kitchen or you go to the bathroom at any given time, the way that television and television advertising and brand advertisers would pay, the way that they define it is that television always has an opportunity to see. But digital does not have that type of metric yet. It does not have that definition. Right? You guys think about a search ad. You could be position 9, position 10, nobody ever sees it. They never scroll down. But you, you know, you're not paying for it necessarily, but you're not getting the value of whatever that impression would be. 
And the same thing with display advertising. You guys, three to four out of 10 above every display ad that's bought never gets seen by anybody. Whether it's below the fold or being served in a background that you're not able to see, whatever it's going to be. And this is a major, major problem because when you look at, again, brand advertising dollars that drive the investment for uh, you know, just advertising of any kind, if they're saying, well, why should I throw so much at digital when I can't really guarantee, I don't have the TV guarantees of that opportunity to see. So this is something else that viewable impressions, something that we've been working on and certainly the marketplace has been working on, the 3Ms initiative and this type of stuff, has been coming up with a better way to be able to define and quantify what is the value of advertising online. So applying that type of guarantee opportunity to see method to digital advertising. So this is something I think you guys are gonna be, you're gonna see is gonna start happening moving forward. And it really starts to get into that apples to apples comparison. Right? So that way, you're not having to just be you know, sitting at the kids' table as it relates to the television advertisers. It really will be, you'll be speaking the same kind of language. Because you know, if you have a viewable impression, because if you have impressions that aren't being seen, that might be driving down the CPMs. But in fact, if you have proof that you have viewable impressions, it actually makes them more valuable and you can charge more. So this is something, again, uh, you know, as we look at the future of internet advertising uh, and the monetization of it, a big thing that we're seeing moving forward. Common metrics should be used to facilitate. Anybody here have about 19 different vendors you guys deal with that has you know, 25 different methodologies hooking you up with numbers about what's effective and what's not? Yes, no, you guys with me? It's first thing in the morning you're hammered, hungover, it's cool. So this really just gets into, it's not, you know, when you're talking about multi-platform planning optimization, there are like the easy metrics to deal with, impressions, clicks. They've always defined online campaigns, who's great, you know, many years ago, you're talking search, but even if you're talking about optimizing for display advertising, less, it's about 0.1% of display ads ever get clicked on. Is that a good way to go about judging value of your ad campaigns? So there are metrics that are important. I don't want to throw them out, but they are imperfect. And this is really where we begin to get into, as you think of, again, the cross-media platform measurement, so all of these different devices and the ability to play across this. You're thinking about effectiveness. Common metrics need to be used. And as we look at more sophisticated metrics, the fact is, is that we're just more sophisticated these days. The internet launches, it's 95. You'd buy, you know, you're on Alta Vista. Anybody ever use Alta Vista? Ugh, brutal. Couldn't find anything. Anyway, the point is, is that the evolving metrics are continuing to get better, right? So you guys see things like view through, ad hover, engagement time. These drive significant higher correlation rates to ad effectiveness, the effectiveness of your campaigns and something as simple as click-through rates. And this is even more important when you begin to get into, and I, the big theme again, when I look at the future of advertising online, it's about brand advertising dollars, since they spend two-thirds of all advertising dollars worldwide, are the ability to be able to speak in their language, such as recall of the brand, likelihood of purchase, actual purchase after being exposed to ads, things of that nature, the big, I think it's like the big six, like the classic brand metrics that you're always looking for. So you need to be able to talk that from television all the way down to everything that's going on in digital. So measurement of ad effectiveness, you use metrics that matter, not those that are just easy to count. So this is you know, sort of an extension of what we just spoke about, is the divide between traditional and digital. Big problem has always been, they're like, well, how many GRPs? What are we reaching? You guys are speaking a completely foreign language to me. Like, I don't care about impressions. I don't understand. Like, you guys are not helping me. And again, TV's controlling it. So you need to be able to find common ground, and I'm telling you guys, as far as digital is concerned, demographics, or what we'll call um, you know, TRPs, target rating points, as well as reach and frequency and GRPs, that's going to be the backbone of all of the cross-media measurement across all of these different devices. Right? So as opposed to it just being the digital person, sitting with print, and then sitting together with uh, TV, if you're able to go ahead and speak in that type of language, as far as that reach is concerned, that's going to give much greater value, and that is the future of digital advertising, and again, the future of da digital advertising across all these different devices, the merging together of those different pieces. So again, it just pushes into some of those additional metrics that we talked about. You have that backbone, but then you'll have specialized stuff that you'll be able to do with, uh, you know, whether it be a particular medium or a particular device or campaign. So just different things to be able to think about, again, the future of where we're going. End-to-end -end advertising analytics should speak the same language. So, again, we've already talked a little bit about everything being able to speak together, but the issue here gets back to when you guys are going about, you know, creating campaigns, you're tagging everything, right? You have 
a ton of third-party vendors that you work with, SSPs, DSPs, network exchanges, et cetera. I mean, we could list them out forever. You know, you got your web analytics stuff. You got a tag from Comscore. It could be just a complete nightmare. You got about 19 things that fire as soon as somebody views a page or sees your ad. And this is really, again, a big thing that we've been pushing for is that single tag management. So I don't want to geek out again, but to go back to a little bit of the technical stuff, having a single tag that would be able to govern everything that's going on as it relates to all of your campaigns. So from that, that pre-planning stage to actual in-flight to post-campaign analysis, you have one set of tags and one set of information to be able to judge stuff. So again, you're going to see like sort of a merging together of that disparate tagging world, which I think will really help with basically defining the value of your online, or excuse me, your online digital advertising. So this is also one of the, I think one of the most important things real time. Past is prologue, but only to a point. Now, this is something I certainly have worked in all the time, right? Looking at data and coming up with insights and saying, listen, this is what's already happened. This is what you guys should do moving forward. Or let's look at last year's holiday season and then talk about what's going to be happening this year's holiday season. And as much as that is absolutely important, that is not going to be able to tell you guys the full story. Now, several years ago, that was all you had, right? You didn't necessarily have real time or updated analytics, like really top notch granular stuff. And that's where we get into the push for real time. So it's not as if like a classic, I used to call it like, you guys ever seen that Ron Popeil guy who'd be like, set it and forget it? And you guys remember this? Like it was like one of those little ovens. It was an infomercial. But that's, that's a lot of times, you know, I've spoken with digital advertisers and they would say, well, I just set it up and then like, whatever. Three months later, I check it out and I see how well we did. And the fact of the matter is that is a very poor way to go about analyzing anything. Now, sure, not nobody in here does that. Sure, you guys are real wired in. But the point is you start to think about the future of, it's really about real time. So the fact that you can optimize in flight while stuff is moving and while it's on the fly. And this is an, you know, an enormous, enormous focus for us uh, not just us as an organization, but for the industry as a whole, is that it's really about creating efficiencies and being able to define them and, and see them while they're happening and take advantage. So again, it gets back into how do you take advantage of, say, digital even over television? Is that you push back and say TV, it's a lot of upfront buys, right? Is the fact is with digital, you could say we could optimize on the go. You know, as things change, as the TV ads hit, as something special happens, we could go ahead and make moves. And we feel that that's a very, very important mix uh, as, it relates, as it relates to your marketing mix moving forward. And then the last one, data should have a common global framework. This is a serious problem for a lot of companies that I deal with. Uh, we sell worldwide, right? It's a small world these days. People could buy things, you could advertise anywhere, you could work with various publishers and target different people in different places. But due to the fragmentation of how the governing bodies, the joint industry committees in all of these different countries, uh, that say this is the local standard and this is what we're going to use. So suddenly you guys as advertisers or marketers are having to deal with, again, multiple, just multiple organizations and multiple types of analytics. So coming up with a way to be able to govern that is also sort of the future and this is stuff that we push for as one of the, again, one of the defining measurement organizations in order to, you know, we are at the table negotiating with these guys all day, every day around the world. And I think that this, and it's not just us, but anybody else, and I think that this will really help with your effectiveness, you know, of what you guys are going to be able to do, both when you're talking to a CMO all the way down to, I need to be able to handle this campaign and get this type of ROI from it. Uh, you know, being able to use the entire world but have, again, a, a, a common metric and a common theme that will play across that, that is coming. That is also, you're going to see that continue, the dominoes will continue to fall. And that will take us to the end of uh, you know, this manifesto, but I would love to open it up for questions. Anything I didn't cover? We got one right here. Oh, we'll start in the back, and then we'll come up front. Hey, I'm Billy McGovern from Adobe. Um, you said that GRPs and TRPs, these offline metrics, are things that we need to be able to speak about. Um, but those metrics have been around, you know, for decades. And so just, it, are you saying that, is your theory that we need to learn those metrics so that we can all standardize and move forward together and then come up with something new? Or is there, are you actually saying that GRPs are the metric of the future? Well, let's say I'm not here to talk about what, what things are going to be like 20 years from now, right? If I was, I'd be a billionaire, y'all be at my conference. So I can tell you this, is, you know, what, what, I, what I could say is that for now, due to the fact that that is where still the mass majority of dollars exist, 
is that you have got to, we have got to be able to speak that language for the time being. Okay, so that's going to be the backbone for what is this new revolution in that multi-platform measurement. So that's what I'm saying is that due to the fact that we have so many different devices and it's becoming so fragmented, in order to be able to have a common ground of discussion, we need to be able to speak in that language. Now, will that evolve? Sure, right? Because if you think about where do GRPs and these types of things come from, it was decades of, say, television advertising analytics to be able to figure out exactly how effective a TV ad is, right? It, has this, it moves the needle on emotional reach and your recall of brand and I love this brand and whatever it's going to be, you know, the ability to tell a story and then a display ad, a banner ad in 1998 wasn't exactly of the same mix. So let's say that we're at a relatively young or even it's called like a nascent stage of, uh, you know, advertising analytics for digital versus some of these other things. So I think for now it's important for us to bend that way and then we'll see how things progress over the next few years. Well, we had one right here. Rob? Oh. Uh, raise your hand, please. I can't see, actually. Okay. Eli, could you talk a little bit about how you see the standards evolution happening? I think one of the things that's interesting right now is that competitive advantage comes from having sometimes better data in one network. Sure. Um, and separate vendors having better data. So who do you see as the players, and how will this come about? So. So let's look at that in a couple different ways, right? And there are, let's call it, Comscore is like a third party objective research firm, right? So we're here in order to help set marketplace standards so that everybody can be judged underneath the same umbrella. And then you have, you know, all of the different types of technologies and vendors and networks and different places that are out there pushing whatever their particular secret sauce is in order to be able to get you to whatever, a better end, like a better targeting end. So from our perspective, and this is for the global stuff or whether it be about GRPs, et cetera, whatever it is that we're talking about, we're just trying to come up with what is that common framework for everybody to work underneath. But that said, that doesn't mean that suddenly you should throw out what are the special metrics or whatever, again, the secret sauce that you're getting from some particular place. So that to me is one of the most important parts. We can, we're here like the Comscores and the Nielsens to help set the stage for this is a playing field. But then the individual organizations that are around, you know, that's where they're there to be able to innovate and say, we now use big data, like a blue guy or whomever it is, and we're able to go ahead and target these people in this fashion at this time, this time of day, this often, et cetera, is, you know, I think that as long as everybody is using the same basis so that we could again talk a GRP language or a TRP or whatever it's going to be, is there's going to be a lot of innovation as it relates to behavioral and segmentation and what can be done, right? So I think that there's a ton of innovation to be had if somebody could really crack it and say, I really understand what are the common themes and the common segments of how people use their smartphones as it relates to internet and the consumption of content, and then maybe even breaking that into there's a real definition of an Apple user versus an Android user versus a Blackberry user. Anybody use a Blackberry? A Microsoft? So believe it or not. Um, no apps. Pay the buck. But so if Microsoft's here, I want apps. Anyway, but the point is that's so there's a lot of innovation to be had about those specific targeting features. Right, so let's not throw out the, the, the metrics and the innovation that's gonna be had. I'm just talking about having a common theme at the top level to talk about, and then everybody will be able to break it off from there. Does that address your question? What else? Another one back here. How are we for time, by the way? I was oh, we, we're good, we're ahead of schedule. Uh, Amy Bartle at La Quinta. Uh, so for all you guys that are worried about impressions and GRPs, I'll tell you, I've, I, I've done it all for a long time. If you're talking national, turn your TV into impressions. If you're talking geo-targeted, you need GRPs and TRPs. But the important thing is everybody sucks at audience. The TV audience is too broad, but they get a pass because they're broad enough to get to what I want. All of us online think we're really good, but I'll tell you what, Blue Kai has my marital status wrong. They think I'm 20 years younger than I am. And they say I have a toddler at the house when I have a senior in high school. So don't tell me how fabulous we're doing online at finding the people I need to sell hotel rooms to. So I would argue don't fight about is it a GRP or an impression. And let's dig into household data, set top box data, take lessons from the, from the you know, old school direct mail guys and let's figure out how to get the audience we want 
on TV, on radio, online, on pre-roll, in search. It's the audience, not the GRP or the impression. Yeah, and and I, I guess there's no question there, but. <laughs> and I 100% and I agree with that, right? I mean, that goes back to that original point of census level data. Preach, so top preach, box stuff. preach. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just agree, it gets back to that idea that you need to be able to define and understand the people, but you need to be able to have that census level data for size and reach, right? The GRP stuff is really just about getting into and being able to get into the room to be able to have the discussion. But I, but I firmly agree that that's what we're talking about is the, the, that granularity that's going to be required in order to really get, and get things right, I think is also key. But I would have thought you were 20 years younger. Other, well, how are we for time? I don't know. Questions? Are we, Do you say that to all the girls? I mean, if they're, you know, if, if they're not 25, I mean, then that's a problem. <laughs> you know, like, within context. Anyway, any other questions, you guys? I don't know. I, again, we're, we're pretty close for time, but uh, I know this is a pretty broad, and there's a lot more granularity in the white paper, which I, I recommend you guys download. But I will be here all day and certainly tonight and at any time moving forward. So. I'm happy to dig into this at a much more granular level for your particular business. Excellent. Well, then, thank you. I'll kick it back to Rob.